Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the June 8th regular school board meeting of the School Board of St. Lucie County. It is, every month gets better and better because there's more people out there to look. I'm just delighted to see all of you. Thank you for being here tonight, um, and a very warm welcome to all of you that are watching us via live stream and video as well. If you would please stand with me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for our pledge, the treasure hunter pledge. As an adult and a treasure hunter, I am committed to search for all the talents, skills, and intelligence that exist in all children and youth. I believe all children are capable of success, no exceptions. Thank you. <laughs> all right, Mr. Superintendent, we will move to our special thanks and recognitions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this time, I'd like to bring up to the uh, microphone uh, Councilwoman Stephanie Morgan from the PSL City Council and the folks she has with her, they're from the, Sun, the PSL Sunset Rotary and they have a very special, special presentation for us tonight, so welcome. Thank you so much. Wow, I didn't know I was going to be that quick up on the agenda because we have a few that are on their way, so I'm going to talk slow. Members of the St. Lucie County School Board, Superintendent Gent, good evening. My name is Stephanie Morgan, and I currently serve as the president of the Port St. Lucie Rotary Club. Along my side is Larry Bro, who is my bodyguard and past president many, many, many times, and I think every single officer there's been in our Rotary Club. Every year, our Rotary Club does various projects to give back to our community. And this year, among many other projects, we handed out over 500 Constitution books to the fifth graders of the St. Lucie County Schools in Port St. Lucie, Renaissance Tradition, Renaissance St. Lucie West, Palm Point, and Morningside Elementary. The Port St. Lucie Rotary Club purchased these books from a 501c3, Constitution for the People Incorporated. Owner Joseph Cofield is hoping to ignite an interest in our U.S. Constitution among the youth of America by giving fifth graders their own personal copy and partner with other civic organizations. Included in the order of the books was a Constitution canvas. Ta-da! You can be Dana. <laughs> that is to be presented to the school district about the designer of the, can of the canvas. Former Navy SEAL, Chris Bent, graduated from Yale in 1962. He graduated from BUDS, Class 31E, and you know how I don't really care for acronyms, and that is Basic Demo Underwater Demolition SEAL, and later assigned to command the recovery units for Gemini 6 and 7, and the very first fully operational Apollo spacecraft, AS-201. I was going to say I was there, but yeah, I was there. Um, <laughs> along with a few others of you that I know, Chris became the first man to touch the Apollo spacecraft returning from space. And he prints these canvases that are given out to all that order the books and hand out the Constitution books in the school district. And this is a signed copy, and we present it to you. So it is with our honor to present this to you tonight and look forward to working closely with the school district to have a Constitution book in the hands of all the students of St. Lucie County. Thank you. Do you want to go down? Oh. oh I have to
Councilwoman Morgan, thank you so much for being here tonight. It would be our desire to have this in every student's hands. So, <laughs> so I charge you with that. Okay, good deal. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate you being here. And Mr. Bro, good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Martin? Okay, um, Board Chair Holly, Superintendent. At this time, I'd like to present the Star Awards for May. Um, I'm sorry, for June. The first one is Lori Green. She is an ESC paraprofessional at Southport Middle School. She was nominated by Teresa Sullivan, who is a behavior analyst here in the district. Lori is the model in terms of the type of educator who wants to work with students with intellectual disabilities. As a paraprofessional, she goes above and beyond to support the needs of the students every day. She is efficient, helpful, proactive, and has a wonderful rapport with her students. She is a true STAR employee. So congratulations to Lori Green. Next we have Leanne Gaelic, who is an ESC teacher at Oak Hammock. She was nominated by parents Christina and Tracy McKinney. They stated that Ms. Gaelic has made a huge impression on their son, a student who has struggled in school in the past. Their son has always come home saying how much he loves her class and how for the first time he actually read a story in front of the class. Ms. Gaelic is always professional, personable, and clear in her intent to help their son. She is a great teacher and a fine representative, not only for Oak Hammock, but for the school district. Next we have Amabel Morales, an instructional materials specialist. She was nominated by Dr. Helen Wild. Amabel Morales manages the K-12 textbooks and supplementary material inventory and has successfully implemented strategies for cost savings and efficiency. She also manages the SLPS Book Depot, distributing and collecting textbooks to college dual enrollment students, as well as adults who are enrolled in the Elite and Swell programs. She is known at the state level for her knowledge and demeanor, as well as by neighboring counties and college partners. Every time Dr. Weil visits, a parent or students tell her how, they, how she has supported them through their high school dual enrollment years. She regularly emails 3,000 students to keep them informed of timelines and updates, and also maintains a welcoming and organized environment which she manages single-handedly. She is most deserving of this award. So congratulations to Amabel. And we also have Jenny Patterson, who is a technical support um, works at the tech, Technical Support Desk in ITS. She was nominated by a teacher from Treasure Coast High School, Eric Barkowiak. He had called the desk asking how to set up an email on his Android phone. The technician, Jenny, was very nice, but after looking into the inf information or the issue, she was unable to help him. She stated that she would continue to look for a solution and call him back. The ticket was closed, and he was amazed to get an email a short time later with the actual exact directions that he needed. He could not believe that he followed up since this has not been his experience with other companies or organizations. Many times he was just left trying to find the solutions for himself. However, Jenny was concerned enough to keep looking for an answer and for that she deserves a STAR award. So congratulations to Jenny's and all of the other STAR recipients. Thank you. It's always a good feeling to be able to recognize our folks, and we appreciate, Ms. Martin, all your efforts on that behalf. We will move now to our ESOL report. Mr. Freeland, welcome to the podium tonight. Good to see you. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Superintendent Jim. Um, I actually have something I want to say, but I want to start with the good news because I can't think of a good way to segue into it. So I'll just start with some... Um, I would say random, they're not random, but they're unrelated, but they're good news. Um, one of the um, things that I usually talk about this time of year is the number of uh, non-reappointments that we have in our district. Um, and I was prepared to do that again this evening, and there are some things I want to talk about, but I do want to say that the number this year appears to be much lower in years past, which is a good thing because in years past we've non-reappointed many effective and highly effective teachers. So this year, that's actually come down quite a bit. And again, in our environment where we have a, a teacher shortage, I think that's an important thing to keep talent in our district. 
In addition, I, I want to give kudos to HR. They have set aside an hour at the job fair specifically, specifically for those teachers who have been non-reappointed. And, and I think it's important to let them know that you are important to us. We do want to keep you even if it didn't work at one school. And so I think that's an important uh, a step into, sorry about that, that was. Well, this year's there we go. I think that's an important step in keeping, um, a lot of ums here, keeping teachers in our district. Uh, I think that's going to keep, cut down on the expenses of recruiting new teachers. And, and when you have talented people, you keep them in-house. So I think that's important. Um, what, I wanna, what I wanna talk about now, and it's, it's interesting this came up, I wanna talk uh, about a speech that Admiral William McCaster gave. It's a commencement speech. Um, he's an alumni of the University of Texas. And in 2014, he was asked to give a commencement speech. It's one of those amazing commencement speeches that I'm going to, I'll send out the link to our members and to all the board members. Um, I'm going to encourage you to look at it, to watch it. It's, it's 19 and a half minutes well spent, in my opinion. Uh, but he talks about his time in, in, I was going to call it SEAL school, but we actually had a SEAL here in BUDS, his, his time going through that training, and 10 lessons that he learned about changing the world. And I think that's important because Really, that's part, even if it's not written, part of the definition of what we do in education from the school board all the way down through the ranks here. We do our job because we want to change the world. And so I'm going to go ahead and read these. And like I said, I promise you they all apply not just to our job, but to life in general. But I'm going to encourage you to go and watch that video when I send the link to you. And I'll talk specifically about the last one when I get there. But his 10 lessons start with, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. Uh, which is true, I've been through it. You make the bed, you feel pretty good. If your day goes terrible, you come home, at least you come home to a well-made bed that you did. Uh, if you want to change the world, find someone to help you paddle. Don't paddle by yourself. If you want to measure the world, or you want to change the world, measure a person by the size of their heart, not the size of their flippers. Uh, I'll give you a hint there. Uh, Admiral McMaster spent a lot of time chasing the smallest boat team, as did the whole class. Um, if you want to change the world, get over being a sugar, sugar cookie and move forward. Uh, again, I'll just foreshadow that. When they were punished, they would in full uniform run into the ocean, then come back and roll around in the sand until they recovered from head to toe. Uh, if you want to change the world, don't be afraid of the circuses. And I think the circuses are something that we in education know quite a bit about, especially after this year. If you want to change the world, sometimes you have to slide down the obstacle head first. If you want to change the world, don't back down from the sharks. If you want to change the world, you must be your very best in the darkest moments. And here we go. If you want to change the world, start singing when you're up to your neck in the mud. And finally, if you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. So I want to talk about being up to your neck in the mud. This year, at least for me, has been the, the most rewarding and also the most frustrating and also the most trying year of my career. And I've been doing this, I'm into my third decade now. I felt many times like I was up to my eyeballs in mud, so to speak. Many of our teachers and our support staff spent the year feeling like they were in their, up to their eyeballs in mud. I'm sure the school board, the administration, many times felt like they were up to their eyeballs in mud. When the Admiral went through this experience, Midnight, they threw him in the mud. They stayed there all night till the sun came up. Cold, teeth chattering, told them that they could quit any time. If, if five, five of them quit, they would let them all out of the mud. All they had to do was get out of the mud and ring this brass bell. Not one of them rang the bell. Not one, they stuck it out, they got through it. Like I said, this year's been the toughest year I can remember. Uh, we never really knew what tomorrow was going to bring. We've said this many times. We were building the bicycle as we rode it for over a year now. Um, some of us have faced situations that could potentially be life-threatening to ourselves or our families. But we stayed. None of us that are still here rang that bell during the whole year. We stayed. We stayed because we wanted to make a difference. We could have rung the bell and no longer had to figure out how to teach virtually. Ring the bell and you no longer have to face individuals who refuse to wear a mask and potentially put you and your family in danger. Ring the bell and you don't have to figure out how to grade in a way that is compassionate but retains rigor. 
ring the bell and you don't have to try and retain your sanity as a new directive comes from the state or district and you have to try and integrate that into your daily routine. Ring the bell and you get to go somewhere less stressful with fewer responsibilities. None of us here, none of us in our classrooms and schools across the district rang that bell. We all stayed because we wanted to change the world. And I think that's an important way to end the year, but also to remember as we go into next year that we have to take care of all of these people. And we've got the trying things coming from Tallahassee when it comes to bonuses and pay and everything else that's out there. And I'm sure we'll do what we always do. We'll, we'll work through that and we'll do our best. But I, want, I just want to mention, it's been a year and these people, my people, our people, my colleagues have stuck it out. And so have you. And so I think that's actually a kudos to us. And with that, I'm going to close and say thank you for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Freeland. Anyone here from CWA to report tonight? I did want to mention on behalf of the board and send our sympathies and condolences to Ms. Martha Vickers, who lost her husband this past weekend. Um, we send our love to her. She always just been a very, very dedicated employee, as was her husband, um, gave their lives to it. So Ms. Vickers, we're thinking about you and praying for you. And our Youth Advisory Council, we decided they could have the summer off, so they aren't with us tonight. So we will move then to our consent agenda. Board members, do I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda as presented? Thank you. Dr. Mills with the motion and Mr. Ingersoll with the second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Superintendent, your recommendation? Recommend the board approve the consent agenda as submitted. Board members, we have the recommendation. Before I take a motion, are there any items you wish to remove for separate discussion or vote? Seeing none, I will take a recommendation, uh, take a motion to approve the recommendation of the superintendent. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Kelly and Mr. Ingersoll. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Superintendent, back to you for staff reports and your report. Thank you. I want to um, recognize at this time uh, some of our new administrators. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Michelle Harrington. She'll be, uh, was just approved as the Director of School Renewal. Siobhan Silas, Principal of Bayshore. Jane Whitaker, Principal of Mariposa. And Kathy Bache. A principal of St. Lucie Elementary, of the four of them will come up uh, to the podium. They can fight over who's going first. And uh, we'll give, just want to give them an opportunity. Uh, Michelle, we'll let you go first since you're there uh, to make some comments uh, to the board. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to continue uh, to serve St. Lucie Public Schools. I stood before the board four years ago to accept the principalship of St. Lucie Elementary. It was a school in turnaround. It was a school under state oversight. And I couldn't be any more proud of the work that we've been able to accomplish at St. Lucie Elementary. I will say, as long and as loud as anybody will listen to me, that truly the teachers and the staff at St. Lucie Elementary are the best you'll find anywhere. And having said that, <clears throat> I'm really proud to be able to turn the reins over to uh, Mrs. Kathy Bache Potenza, who I've worked with um, for the last four years. Um, and I'm really excited that she gets to continue the work that we've done. And now I'm excited to be able to uh, continue to work with schools beyond just St. Lucie Elementary. As a product of St. Lucie Public Schools, I um, am a firm believer that education, public education, is the great equalizer, and I promise to work every day to level the playing field for every single student in St. Lucie Public Schools. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, St. Lucie Public Schools board members, and Superintendent Gent. First, let me start by saying I'm humbly, I humbly thank you for selecting me to serve as principal in not only the best school district in all of Florida, but most certainly the best school in all of St. Lucie County, St. Lucie Elementary. Being afforded the opportunity to continue the journey started by my mentor and friend, Dr. Michelle Harrington, is truly an honor. When I joined the St. Lucie Elementary Rising Star family four years ago, I had no idea that it would be the best life decision I had made. 
SLE is a special place with some of the most dedicated and caring adults who believe every child should be given the opportunity to succeed. Our job as educators is to remove the obstacles and challenges faced by our students and ensure their future is not defined by their circumstances. I can proudly stand before you and say, and reiterate what Dr. Harrington said, that the St. Lucie Elementary family believes this full heartedly and works tirelessly to make a difference in the lives of our students and their families. It is my honor to serve the children, their families, the community, and my staff as principal of St. Lucie Elementary. Before I close, I would be remiss to not, to not acknowledge some very special people in my life who have always supported me both personally and professionally. First and foremost, Dr. Michelle Harrington. It was truly God's work that brought us together. I cherish your leadership, your mentorship, and most importantly, your friendship. Thank you, Grasshopper, for being you and growing me into the leader I had inside me. I'd like to publicly thank my mom, who's here tonight with me, for modeling for me a work ethic and a compassion for people like no other. I am proud every day to be your daughter and hope today you are even more proud of me. To my daughter, Caitlin, who is watching from Georgia, your journey through education inspires me to do more and be more. She was that kid who some teachers didn't believe in or have the confidence in to do more. She proved them wrong every day, and she is what drives me to be the educator I am. Lastly, to my husband, Randy, who has always been my biggest cheerleader and supporter of my career. I would not be here today without your love and support. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And now that we will be, in about a week, um, permanent residents of St. Lucie County, I promise I'll cook dinner more often. Thank you again. I am truly humbled and honored to serve St. Lucie Public Schools and the St. Lucie Elementary community. Thank you. Before you, before you leave the podium, could the St. Lucie Elementary family, I know there's quite a few of you here tonight, would you just stand so that we can appreciate you and with a personal or... Thank you. had hoped they would stand. Mom, go ahead and stand. Yeah, stand up, Mom. Mom, husband. Yes. There we go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, I'm going to take this off. Good evening, Madam Chairman, school board members, and Superintendent Chen. It is an honor to work with such an amazing school district that provides the best support and customer service to their stakeholders. I'd like to thank Dr. Reed and Ms. Lynch for exemplary leadership and their unwavering support. To my executive director, Ms. Willard, I can't express my gratitude enough. You've made this transition seamless with the support and encouragement that you've given me. I'm beginning my 17th year in education with St. Lucie County Schools. And I've had the opportunity to serve this district in many different roles throughout these, these years. Teacher, instructional partner, and assistant principal. Each one preparing me to reach higher and learn more. I'm blessed to be able to continue the journey of excellence and serving the staff, parents, and students of Bayshore Elementary. We have already accomplished so much even through this pandemic year. I take pride in serving the most dedicated and compassionate faculty and staff. We make an unstoppable team, and they already know my motto is, teamwork makes the dream work. Last but not least, to the people who raised me, for striving for nothing less than my best. To my parents, thank you for your guidance. To my husband of 16 years, wonderful years, and my biggest accomplishments, my sons, Patrick and Preston. Thank you for your selflessness and putting up with my crazy long hours, dinnerless nights, at least not cooked by me. I wouldn't be able to do what I do without your understanding and your unconditional love and support. A resounding thank you to my village. There's many more that I can name, 
too many to name, but I'm grateful. Thank you. Do you, do you have any of your Bayshore family here tonight that would like to stand? Okay. Bayshore? Good. He's traveling on. All right, there we go. <laughs> there there we go. go. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair, Board Members, Superintendent Gent. Thank you for this amazing honor tonight, and I am truly humbled to be selected as the next principal of Mariposa Elementary. As a woman of faith, I believe that there are no coincidences and that every part of our life's journey really truly prepares us for the next. And ultimately, the things that surprise us are truly no surprise at all. I first want to recognize Mr. Logue and wish him the very, very best as he begins his new path to retirement. And over, we had an awesome day of celebrating his legacy today. It was an awesome, awesome day. And over the past 16 years, he has built an amazing legacy at Mariposa and one that is evident the moment that you enter that campus. It is about the students and families first, and that is what opens the door to the ultimate learning experience for all. And I am really, really excited to join Ms. Patton and lead the Mariposa team to continue this amazing work. There are many thank yous that I am certain I'm gonna leave people out, but I first wanna thank my husband, children, and grandchildren for your continued love and support and for always being my biggest cheerleaders. They saw me through two advanced degrees, times when I really wanted to throw in the towel and quit, but ultimately, I hope that they see that never giving up is an option because Whitakers don't quit. That's our motto. And when you persevere, every hurdle taught you something to get you to the finish line. To my parents who made it possible for me to be the very first college graduate on both sides of our family, they, their example, love, support, and sacrifice made it possible for me to fulfill my dream of becoming a teacher and eventually standing here in front of you as a new elementary principal. My only regret is that my dad's not here to see it. Thank you to Alan Edwards who took a chance on me and gave me my first job at Village Green Elementary back in 1998. And to the other principals who gave me endless opportunities to grow as a leader. Thank you to Helen Wild and to the OTL team for what you have done to help me along my journey this principalship would not have been possible without all the things that I learned and experienced being part of that team. An unknown author wrote that leaders instill in their people a hope for success and a belief in themselves. These pos positive leaders empower people to accomplish their goals in everything they do. This reflects the qualities of the leader that I plan to exhibit. Thank you for your confidence in me to lead to motivate and empower this new team of students and staff as we continue this amazing path to success that's already been established. I'm excited, I'm ready, and I'm glad to be an official Mariposa Monarch. Thank you. I would also like uh, to introduce our APs. They can just stand at your seat. Um, and when you get your principalship, you're going to be able to come up and, uh, and be as nervous as they were. And, uh, but we'll take it easy and we'll also recognize your family. So I'm proud to announce that uh, going over, well, remaining it as the assistant principal of Bayshore. Um, well, she was a teacher on assignment this year, but she's remaining at Bayshore. Paulette C. St. Louis. Paulette, please stand. Okay. AP at Palm Point, Dana Markowitz. Okay, very good. Anybody with you? Okay. Oh, your friend? Okay. Ms. Perez, good to see you. Uh, going on as AP at Dan McCar McCarty, Terrence Bariner. Terrence, on the side. And we have some Dan McCarty folks here as well behind them. Uh, very good. AP over at uh, Fort Pierce, Westwood Academy. Ms. Nicole Smith. Nicole. 
And right behind her is uh, her principal, Joseph Slizo. Good to see him. <laughs> AP, St. Lucie Elementary, Dorcia Reed. <laughs> and we know we have a St. Lucie family here as well, the crew. And then uh, AP is uh, at Forest Grove, Andrea Riley. Andrea Riley. And uh, did I miss anybody, Dr. Prince? HR? Anybody? Okay, very, very good. Um, Mr. Superintendent, before yes, you proceed, we didn't get an opportunity to recognize Ms. Whitaker's new school family and her personal nope. family if they're here with her tonight, and especially Mr. Logue. If you would all stand, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Logue, uh, we're going to talk about you on Thursday. So, uh, and that leads me, and I'll go ahead there right now. We have our, our superintendent summit on Thursday. I know that uh, the chair and vice chair will be over in uh, Tampa at the school board associations conference, but I hope that uh, our other school board members can join us there. Um, we're at Treasure Coast at uh, 730, Treasure Coast High School at 730 Thursday. So I, I want to invite you and hope that you can make that. Also want to thank, uh, we had a great graduation. Uh, our ceremonies went off without a hitch. Want to thank the principals, thank the board members for your participation and the community. It really shines a light on the positive things that happen in our community. And um, we did them outside. It was our second year over at the, uh, at the stadium. And again, uh, it went off without a hitch. I've already thanked our, our district staff um, that were there. And it looks like that may be the, the new way where we're going to end up here the next, uh, next year as well at the, uh, because it works so well out there as opposed to splitting them up. Uh, Ms. Popwell, are you okay with that? Okay, as long as you stay in the morning. Okay, all right, there's, 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 more, uh, there's more shade in the morning. Uh, okay. Um, well, you have seniority on Mr. Lazo, who's shaking his head no. So yeah, you've got the morning, okay? I just, I just made that decision for you. Um, very good. And then um, I wanna show three um, news clips for the board, I know that uh, we talk about publicizing the great things that we do, and we really, um, uh, Ms. Martin Liddy and her team have really done a great job of uh, getting the information and the good word out to, uh, to the local media. So at this time, we want to show uh, uh, the Treasure Coast Business Summit, I believe, is first. Well, this year's Treasure Coast Business Summit featured about 100 exhibitors here out on the floor, including some very young entrepreneurs from our area. Drone operators, robot designers, virtual welders, and so much more all on display here at the largest business-to-business -business summit and expo on the Treasure Coast. Organizers tell me the Treasure Coast Business Summit is designed to inspire business leaders, professionals, and job seekers. See what's out there for them as far as economic opportunities, um, job opportunities. There's so much um, abundant resources available for businesses. People also get a chance to network and build new business connections. We come here to build some relationships. We want to uh, get our name a little better known in the community and see what we can be a service to folks. This year's theme, education featuring attractor programs at area high schools. They have so many different attractor programs that are offering kids opportunities to step right out of high school into a job or actually take it to the next level and then hopefully enter Indian River State College. Those programs include culinary, robotics. I'm just trying to uh, get into college, specifically IRSC, try to get my electrical engineering. And I think this will be a good background for uh, that. And even virtual welders for construction projects. Everyone knows there's a shortage of uh, labor in all of the construction trades. So what we're doing at uh, Port St. Lucie High School is uh, in our Building Construction Technologies program is uh, just getting them interested in uh, really any trade. There's plenty of opportunity here in South Florida and on the Treasure Coast, and this is the place to find it. In Port St. Lucie, Angela Rozier, WPPF 25 News. 
New this morning, high schoolers, they are performing animal surgeries inside their classroom. It's actually going on at one St. Lucie County Public School, which is preparing them for careers right after graduation. Really cool program here. WPTV News Channel 5 Stephanie Suskind takes you inside and gives a sneak peek into that program and shows you how it's making an impact on the industry's future. Don't touch anything that's not sterile. So you can touch this blue area, but don't touch anything else because everything else is not sterile. For veterinarian Dr. Alec Wynn, neutering a dog is pretty routine. Pretty non-invasive procedure. Most of these guys do pretty well. But for these Fort Pierce Westwood Academy High School students. I was just monitoring the vitals. I was checking the heart rate, making sure the, the amount of oxygen in the blood was good, checking the blood pressure. It's a hands-on learning experience better than from any textbook. There's things that they have no words to tell you how to do it. You have to see it, you have to experience it. Sounds good, do not touch anything, let the water go. Teacher Brittany Shown is a graduate of the Veterinary Assisting Program herself, now revitalizing it to make sure students get the exposure they need to get a job after they graduate. Getting to show them like what I had as a passion is, you know, awesome. I mean, I can just see it in them that they have that same passion, they're, they're wanting to be in the same field, so it's been a really good experience. Students work with a variety of animals, learning what it takes to care for them. They take a certification exam, and once they pass, students like Malachi Araya can assist with surgeries in the classroom. It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. It's really great getting to work on hands-on and getting to interact with the different doctors to see how they do things differently. So we're going to make our first incision. Right here. During this surgery, two students help Dr. Wynn with the neuter procedure on Ryder, a golden retriever that belongs to a school employee. And then right in between the goalposts. The students were able to intubate and give pre-medication that introduces the anesthesia gases. This is PDS suture. From there, um, the doctor allowed the students to help out in the surgical procedures, and then students are also able to do post-operative care. For students like Malachi who want to become a vet someday, the interaction is invaluable. This definitely uh, helps me with my confidence in being sure that this is something that I want to do. It makes me like all like warm and fuzzy inside, you know, like I really have put a lot of work into this, but seeing it come from the student just makes it that much better. Training the next generation of vets for years to come. Stephanie Suskind, WPTV News Channel 5. And then our, th our third one, really, it came out last night, and this was, in, uh, I want to thank um, uh, Bill Tomlinson and his team. We're able to uh, go into the community uh, with uh, some, uh, for the shots, for the COVID shots, and so we'll show that brief clip right now as well. It's an effort to get shots into the arms of students and the community. Today, St. Lucie Public Schools started the summer off by hosting a vaccine clinic to those 12 and older. WPTV's Derek Lowe with more on the ongoing effort set to continue this week. Tonight, there are hundreds of shots available to the entire community, not just students or their families, even though the partnership is with the school district. Inside the gymnasium at Fort Pierce Central High School. I feel better than I thought than I did at the beginning. At the beginning, I was pretty nervous. 12 year old Lindsay Heffron is taking the leap to get mm -hmm. vaccinated against COVID-19. Thank you. A lot of people at my school are talking about it, and one or two of my friends already got it. The pop-up clinic stems from a partnership between St. Lucie Public Schools and the Florida Community Health Center, as well as CDR Health. This week, there are a total of five sites and 1,800 doses available. The benefit of that is if we do have a case in a school and there has to be a contact tracing investigation, we can quickly see who's already been vaccinated and those individuals, as long as they're not displaying any symptoms, will not have to quarantine. It was very, very simple. Um, actually, I just said to myself, I should have done this a long time ago. In a place where she feels most comfortable, Mona Ray Miller Buchanan, the school's principal, also received her first shot. I felt at home and everyone here was, they were wonderful. Tuesday's clinics will also be in Fort Pierce at both Westwood Academy and Lincoln Park Academy. We have a full list of locations and times over on our website, WPTV.com. Thank you, Lydia. And in just, um, you know, those speak for themselves. There's nothing else I need to say regarding that. Um, in two weeks at our workshop, I'll talk about uh, the state of the district and really get into the weeds on the highlights of the school year. Uh, we'll hit a little bit of that on Thursday with our principals as well. 
and uh, and talk more to the board regarding that. But as uh, was mentioned, that you know the year has ended, and it's been a uh, highly successful year uh, by any measure, and uh, a unique summer with summer school uh, at all of our schools coming on board right now, and we're we're working for that. But the uh, the programs that are there and the, uh, the the PR that we receive for that, you know, f through um, the local media. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's priceless, and again, I appreciate uh, what's happening in our school centers as well as um, uh, Lydia and her communications department for able to get that word out. There was once, it used to be a time when you try to get that information out, and you were lucky if you were able to uh, to do that, but because of personal relationships and what we've been able to do with uh, the folks that are down in West Palm, um, they really reach out to us, and uh, you can see the great things that are happening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Madam Chair. Just real quick, I, I just want to congratulate our our staff on, on all of this. Lydia, it's, uh, every time it's done, I'm going to mention something because you guys are doing a great job. This is what I was looking for, and boy, did you answer. <laughs> did you answer? What a great job. And I just want to mention a quick story. Uh, one of the, uh, the Westwood Veterinary uh, uh, Program that we have, the, that one of the little boys, uh, not a little boy, he's big, uh, he lives across the street from me. And I won't say Michaela's name because he'll, he'll get mad at me, but uh, he diagnosed my dog. He came, came over about two weeks ago, and my dog jumped up in his arms, and it was a problem with the dog. We were taking her, taking her to the vet, and he diagnosed her immediately. We get to the vet three days later. It's exactly what he said was wrong with the dog. Like, it's incredible. So great for that. I love to see those programs, and again, great job, Lydia. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Lizzo, you can take that back to your vet folks. <laughs> yep. I could have saved a lot of money. I... <laughs> <laughs> All right, board members, we need to read into the minutes the emergency actions. There is a motion confirming, approving, and ratifying all of the superintendent's actions taken during the COVID-19 public health emergency for the period covered by his report and authorizing the superintendent's continuation of such actions for so long as the governor's emergency declaration remains in effect. I have a motion. We have to have a motion first. We have a motion? Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Comments? I just wanted to say, uh, Superintendent Gent already knows how I've been feeling about the, uh, the mass mandate and so forth, but I want to say that I'm very pleased to see the work that uh, is being done in regards to um, the vaccine clinics and, um, and, and really not only our students, but our entire community clinics where they can come to. I just want to let uh, you know that I am pleased with that and wanted to make that public. Any other comments before we vote? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Harold, do you have a report this evening? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. We then will move on to our school board member reports, and Mr. Ingersoll will begin with you tonight. I just want to thank Mr. Jen and uh, his staff for a great school year. Thank you, David Freeland, for the open communication. And it's been a trying, see, trying year, and our teachers and our support staff have all done well. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ingersoll. Ms. Richardson? Thank you. Um, I, too, would like to um, just say thank you for, I mean, I came midstream November, but thank you to everybody that, for all the work that you have done during this, this season. I'd like also to say congratulations to our graduates. Behind you, graduates, is all your memories. Before you is your dreams. Around you are the people that love you, and within you are your dreams. I'd like also to congratulate um, all of our employees who are retiring this month. Thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you've done to make the district what it is today. I wish you nothing but the very best in your retirement. Happy retirement. Also, parents, uh, we have lots of um, people here today, um, but parents, I'd like to speak to you. I'd like um, to let you know that we need your participation, your presence at these meetings. Obviously, education is one of 
the top two topics or hot topics. You can't turn on the TV, you can't open your internet or whatever it is, and, and don't see something on education. So it is very important, whatever the reason is. So we need to hear from you. We think globally, but we act locally. With this in mind, I would like to revisit um, the, the times that we have the board meeting. In order to have our um, parents here, I think that we should go back, we should visit this and go back, go to six o'clock as opposed to five o'clock because then they'll be able to come. People work and so they leave work at five, let's give them some time to get here at six because I think that with everything that's going on in our work today that we need to hear from our parents. So um, we send men to the moon, we can do anything that we want to do if we want to do it. So let's revisit this. Let's think about six instead of five. I'm not sure how to get that on the agenda. And to any, all our kids, everybody that's on vacation, happy summer vacation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Mr. Kelly? Yes, first, first I'd like to mention uh, the graduations that we had, a couple that I was out at at Longwood Stadium. Uh, I, that, that was our staff that set that all up, Mr. Gent. Boy, uh, great job, guys. It, that was a lot, a lot of work, and, and we did six graduations like that all in the same spot. So impressed, and, and to see the kids in person, uh, we've got we got some great people coming up. I, I'm, I'm, I think my Social Security is going to be okay. I, I really uh, think we got some great graduates in uh, the, the speeches, the valedictorians, the celebratorians. It was just fantastic. I was so impressed, and. Uh, but the setup, I just want to thank staff and everyone that was involved in setting that up and putting up those 3,000 chairs out in the field there. What a little hot that day, a couple of days, but it was pretty good. Uh, so I want to thank them all. Uh, thank everybody for every, all the work they did this year. I think uh, we had a, our speaker was correct. Nobody rang the bell and nobody's ringing the bell. If I think I got that speech the right way, nobody rang the bell, we're not going to ring it next year either or the year after. That's for sure. So. Good luck to everybody. Have a great summer. Stay safe. Be well. Be nice to each other. Mr. Logue, I missed you today, but I'm going to see you after the meeting, sir. That's good man. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Dr. Mills? I want to once again congratulate all of our new principals uh, that were recognized tonight, and you're stepping into some large shoes with Mr. Vogue being um, getting ready to well, have retired as well as um, Ms. Harrington moving on. Big shoes, but I do appreciate um, every, the comments that you made. Your speeches were um, just right on time. I really enjoyed hearing you give God the glory, hearing you say thank you for the blessing, uh, and just the, the things that you recognize, the faith someone mentioned about having faith, and I'm just really pleased that we have such great people in this district and in our schools who are making such a tremendous difference. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, I am a minister, I am very spiritual, not religious, but spiritual. And so to hear the different ones get up and, and say what you had to say about your own walk and how you brought been, you really believe God has brought you to the place that you are today really did my heart good. Um, congratulations again, and to those of you that are retiring and that's moving on, we just want you to know how much we appreciate each and every one of you. It, uh, we've got the best that uh, are making a difference in the lives of children, and so that gives me great comfort and peace. Um, also, I mentioned a little bit about the no mask mandate, um, and you, as you can see right now, I'm not wearing my mask, and the reason why I'm not wearing my mask is because I got my vaccine. So, you know, I'm able to return to some normalcy now, and that means a lot. I don't, I'm not the type to rush in to just let everything fly and go, but as we move forward, 
You know, we just encourage our community to get your vaccine. I have found that many people within the community are afraid to get the vaccine. And so we just want to encourage you that um, it's not like we started from the beginning with this vaccine. We've already had the foundation necessary for it. And we just had to make a couple of additions and take away and what have you for the COVID-19. So be encouraged, get your vaccine. That's the way we're returning back to normal. I was able to attend all six graduations without a mask because I have that comfort now that if I, if, even if I was to get it, which it is a very small percentage chance, it would not affect me the way it might have done if I got it otherwise. So um, I personally have friends and family members who have died from COVID. So I want to encourage you, if you want to be afraid of anything, be afraid of getting COVID and get your vaccine so that you can get back to normal. We will be, uh, cheer person Debbie here at Holly and myself will be going to the FSBA conference. This is the, um, the uh, state conference for school board members. And um, I will feel, feel very comfortable with still keeping my distance and being wise but um, I feel comfortable and, and more safe. So I just want to encourage you all uh, to get the kids vaccinated so we can return back to normal as soon as possible as well. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, Dr. Harrington, Mr. Vogue, thank you for your work. Um, St. Lucie Elementary needed someone like a Dr. Harrington there, and we really do appreciate what you've done. And now we get to have you for many schools. So we're excited about that as well. Thank you, Dr. Mills. A couple of items before we close out this portion of the agenda. Um, Dr. Mills mentioned that she and I will be traveling to Tampa tomorrow for the Florida School Board Association Conference. It will be the first time we will all be back together as the 67 districts since 2019. So there's a lot of um, excitement around it um, and a good agenda for us. So, But state law does require that before we are able to travel, we need to have an opportunity for the public to comment because it is an expense for us to go. So are there any in the audience tonight that wish to address that? Okay, seeing none, we would then need a motion to approve the trip tomorrow for Dr. Mills and myself. Thank you, Mr. Ingersoll, a second? Thank you, Ms. Richardson, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. One other note of housekeeping for the month of July, as was our practice last year, our July 13th meeting, which would normally be our evening meeting, will now be held at nine o'clock in the morning because our fourth Tuesday meeting has to be held time certain at 5.01, as that is our budget hearing. So please mark your calendars that July 13th will be 9 a.m. and July 27th will be 5.01. And board members also remember that July 27th is our master board training. So we will have been here all day and we will go right into our budget meetings after that. That's the items of business. I too want to take the opportunity to just profusely thank all of you for the just phenomenal job you have all done this year. Um, all 5,000 employees, 40,000 students. It has just been a tremendous year on both ends of the spectrum. Thank you for what you've done, what you continue to do. Um, I feel confident that our year coming up will still have some challenges, but certainly nothing like we have already overcome. One of the things I'm really looking forward to, and since Mr. Madden is here in the audience tonight, we gotta have a production back in 22, right? Absolutely, <laughs> that's great. A lot of the things that we just so enjoyed, the productions in our schools, the concerts, the bands, the sports activities, all of those things, the students, 
and coaches and directors have just been so patient throughout this ordeal. So we are really looking forward to being able to participate in those activities again and look forward to them. So my wish for all of you is, um, I know the summer won't slow down much, but it will be a little bit slower. But I just ask you to take some moments for yourself and for your family. Um, cook some dinner, make your beds, all of those things. Um, get back into somewhat of a schedule as we get ready and anticipate August coming upon us. But again, my profuse thanks for all you've done. And as we have no other business to come before us tonight, all of you go and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your evening, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. We're adjourned. <laughs>